Hey guys, Ryan's Reborns here. Welcome back to another video. So today I'm talking about schedules with bottle feeding in a long-term reborn roleplay. So if you've been here before, you will know that the past few summers I have done a long-term roleplay over the whole of the summer holidays where I would feed and change and just pretend that my reborn was real for a whole like month <laughs> obviously i know that they're not real i'm not insane but i enjoy just pretending and playing with them as though they were so i've done these long-term role plays that i don't think many other people have done correct me if i'm wrong um but I put a lot of research into perfecting these schedules. I've had an interest in dolls and doing longer role plays like this. Since I was very young, I have probably been researching this since I was like 10, trying to figure out how best to do this. And I think I've done it. I've got it. Yet to test it out yet. That will come this year, this summer, in like two weeks maybe. More on that, just stay excited. As I said, I've done a lot of research over the years to perfect these. I used to underestimate the amounts a lot, I wouldn't give them that much at all, or I'd give them way too much for their age. I fed too quickly, so if I was doing a feed with the baby, I would sit there for like five minutes on a four ounce bottle, which is just a bit quick. I mean, babies, some of them do eat that quick, but like, not great, not massively realistic, not what I'm going for at least. I also probably fed them too frequently, especially when I was younger because I was impatient and like, babies sleep an awful lot, but when you're like 11 with a short attention span, you just want to be doing stuff with them all the time. So probably fed them too frequently as well. I followed a very strict schedule with no variation, so I would feed them almost on the dot every three hours. So I'd do a feed at seven, then I'd do a feed at ten, then I'd do a feed at two, and then a feed at five, and then another at seven. And it would go through like that, and I would have alarms on my phone, and every three or four hours, depending on what I was doing that year or that day, every like set amount of time I would sit down and I would feed him and I would change him and then put him back down to sleep and go about the rest of my day for another three hours until the alarm went off. It was just way too structured to be realistic. I have now found what I believe is the perfect way for me. It only follows through the first month so far. It's up to 30 days. I will talk about that now. I'm going to talk about my past with everything. So the first bottles that I ever got for my dolls when I was younger, not reborns, just dolls, I think, was these. They are nine ounce Tommy Tippy bottles, jungle themed, like that. They're very hard. I don't know if that's how they were or if I've they've just gone that way. But um the end of this one is broken. You can see straight through it. I used to seal my bottles by sticking a toothpick through the end of it. I would just stab in a toothpick and leave it. And then feed the baby. Which just not, not, not ideal. So they were the first. And I would use a mix of flour and water. Flour and water. Which then would separate and eventually went mouldy because it was actually food, it was flour. 
so it, it stank and it would clog up and it would go green and mouldy it was disgusting because i would just forget to empty out the bottles and it would sit there in a drawer or something for a month two months three months and then i'd pull it out again and it was green and, and i'd be washing it out in the sink in the bathroom sink with hand soap not not great i then got a pack of three more nine ounce bottles so there's this one there's a green one there's a purple one different wild animals on and again the bottles like discolored and stained and cloudy look at that that's brown it wasn't brown when i bought it and again i think i did it with a toothpick not ideal then when i was going or i think this was when i either when i first bought my changing bag or when i was taking him on holiday with the changing bag these wouldn't fit in the bottle compartment or at least they would but barely and i wanted to fit it in with a pot of the flour so i could mix it up underneath that wouldn't fit what did fit was this a five ounce tommy tippy bottle it's got a little bit of water in it at the moment but i had this and then i'd upgraded to my new way of sealing bottles i believe we attempted to seal some of these with liquid silicon or some kind of thing like that that i bought from like b and q and it just didn't work we probably didn't leave it long enough and then it just washed out or it wasn't waterproof or it wasn't flexible whatever the reason it didn't work this was the only one that i could find last minute and it came with handles that you could put on and a sippy cup lid as well as a bottle so you could take this off replace it with a sippy cup and you could put on handles that would were just a ring and then it would come around like that so you it, it was like so it could grow with the kid but like obviously useless to me so i just used this but i couldn't find multi-packs in asda so i just one of these and it's green and it's got a lion on it and it's really cute and it says big raw and i do like it i don't know if tommy tippy the shape of it works that well with reborn faces maybe it's just eddie but like now it's sealed with silicon i have liquid silicon now what i used to do was i'd use these so when you modify a dummy and you cut off the silicon bit off a dummy you cut off the teat and that's that and i would put it on the end because it's, it's also clear and silicon and you could like squeeze it in i'm not gonna do it but you could you can get it all the way down so it covers the entire top all the way like down to there and then it wouldn't leak out i don't have an unsealed bottle now except for these big ones but you could do that that's how i did for years in all the role play videos that you've seen that is how they are sealed with this it's only in the past few weeks that i've bought liquid silicon for the first time since i was 10 or 11. so this fly i would use these put them over and then it wouldn't leak out but sometimes because when you're pressing it against the reborn's face and it wobbles a bit and it kind of comes loose or like something would leak out into it and then it would be full of like the dried flour or what i eventually upgraded to using baby powder it's tesco baby powder i have that in like a feeding pot Tommy Tippy baby food pots full of baby powder and a little munchkin spoon and these 
I would scoop into the bottle and then water and it would mix up so that was ideal because it then wouldn't go off so it wouldn't have a bad smell and yes it would separate but I could shake it back up and then I felt like I was making a bottle and shaking it that was probably just my excuse but yes baby powder again in all these role play videos that you've watched oh, it's going everywhere you have seen baby powder and bottles sealed with dummy teats that's what I've done for years I figured that out myself I mean people have probably done the baby powder thing before but I don't know if people have done this before I tried so many ways and that's what worked for me then I bought my three pack of Avent bottles which if you watched my selling video I'm giving one away well not giving it away like you pay for it but it's going in the box an Avent bottle is going in the box here it is I really like these bottles apparently I was fed with these and they're just four ounces they're like typically what you imagine a baby bottle to be just that is the image of a baby bottle isn't it that's just what they are and it's just a three pack and this is it now if you're wondering what the fluid is now washing detergent white washing detergent And it would just, it's now sealed with silicon, so the ends are fully movable. You can do whatever you want with it, and it will not come out. It looks really odd. But these, so this year, I have it actually modified. And... So I can just pop it in there and feed him and then do that or well, you can do that see there's different ways that people like put it to their faces some people do push it in like so some people will push it in like this and then feed the baby Mine won't stay in, it comes out. But they would do that regardless. Oh, that's weird, it drips down. <laughs> Feed it. And it goes flat. Like that. That's how I did it for a while. Then I would do it where you, like, invert the whole thing in. And just leave it in because then it's basically just that without it sticking out the top it sticks in instead but then obviously you have the issue of just carrying around a bottle that doesn't have a top if you take it out in public it looks weird whereas ones like this you can then do that feed the baby take it out other people would fold it though, they would like do that but then like yes you're doing that and that looks fine but on the other side it looks like that or like if you do it down it doesn't look quite right same with up like there's always going to be an angle that people might see it and that just made me insecure about it but anyway I have it now and it's done like this and this is how they are done now when there's water in you can see it's just it's not dripping at all not leaking so now i use uh, it's my silicon in little glove it has your nozzle it's multi-purpose silicon sealant clear waterproof so it's for like kitchens and bathrooms and i bought it on amazon for a few quid maybe and now 
sealed four bottles with it. So just a little bit in the end of the bottle, tiny bit, make sure you cover the hole. If you get it to go in well enough, it will like poke a tiny bit out of the hole on the outside. You can just swipe that off with your finger and then you know that it's definitely clogged the hole. And then I left that for like 24 hours to just sit and dry. And then always tested it with water before I tested it with detergent. And that is that. Now, on to actual schedules, what I'm doing this year. So they recommend that up to six months, you feed a baby 2.5 ounces per pound of body weight per day. So you would take however much your baby weighs, how many pounds the baby weighs, times it by 2.5, and then divide by however many times you're going to feed them in the day, and that's how much they should have per feeding. I've tried my best to follow along with that. I mean, obviously, most reborns aren't weighted that great, and for a long-term one, the baby would be growing, whereas my baby isn't growing it's a doll so what i have now is a table with day amount and interval it goes like this i will put in a picture now and you can pause the video and look at it so if you want to follow along with that you can screenshot the table i will try and explain now so the ones where on the day, there's a little star next to two of the slots. That is because that is a growth spurt. So they are either eating more or eating more frequently. And afterwards, they would grow a lot and probably go up in their amount of food. So the first one, seven to ten days, it is the same amount that he was drinking before, but much more frequent. And then afterwards, we increase in both amount and interval. For the second one, it goes up in amount and more frequent and then afterwards it goes up in amount again and up in interval. So how I use this or how I plan to use this in day-to-day -day life. So if we take day three to six, so it's the third row down, he's having two ounces every two to three hours. Fine, yes? So what you would do is for the hour bracket you use a random number generator so if I generate a random number between 1 and 60 and it comes out with 28, then because the beginning of my bracket is 2, we're going 2 to 3 hours. You would have 2 hours plus the 28, 2 hours 28. So since the beginning of the last feed, you add on 2 hours 28 and that's when the next feed will be. So there should be 10 feeds a day. I would do the final one of the day then skip the first three night feeds and do the early morning one. So for example, I would do 11.03, skip 1.06, 3.30 and 6.16 and then I'd do the 8.22 feed. In the day I would use a timer on my phone and I have the sound set as a baby crying. So the timer would go off after 2 hours 28. But I would have an alarm for the early morning feed and the next one just in case I slept through it. With babies, if they start crying because they're hungry, that's a late, a late cue. They are starving and it's more difficult to feed them then because they're really upset. So what you try to do is catch the hunger cues before they're crying. So they start rooting, they turn their head and stick their tongue out, they try and put their fingers in the mouth, they're trying to suck on things and just like generally getting a bit fussy and then eventually they start crying when they're really, really hungry if they haven't been noticed. So because I would have a timer on my phone, if any of you know, I don't know if it does it with Androids, but with iPhones, when you have a timer, it shows how long is left on your home screen before you, or on your lock screen before you unlock your phone. It will show you how much time is left. So I will try to notice the hunger cues 10 to 15 minutes before the timer is supposed to go off. So then when it's been around two hours, if he's feeding every two to three hours. It's been around two hours and I'm kind of thinking he's probably due a feed now. I will keep checking to make sure. And if it's 15, maybe 10 minutes before the time is supposed to go off, I could then be like, okay, well, we'll get you some food now. And then I would get set up with a bottle and everything, make sure I'm done with what I'm doing and get everything ready to give him his feed before he starts crying. Whereas if I'm busy and I don't notice and I don't remember to check my phone, and the timer goes off and he starts crying, 
now we have a fussy baby. Just adds that little bit more realism in my mind, having to notice the hunger cues and if you get too busy and too distracted and you don't notice, then you have a baby who's hard to calm down and hard to feed. But I would do about a quarter ounce more or less if he's at the higher or lower end of the interval bracket. So 228, 2 hours 28 is pretty much in the middle. So if it's only been like 2 hours and 3 minutes since his last feed, because that's at the lower end of the bracket, I would maybe give him a quarter ounce less than what he would usually have, because it hasn't been as long since the last one. Whereas if it had been like 2 hours 57, that's almost the full 3 hours, so then he would get a quarter ounce more, because he's gone longer without food, he's hungrier. I don't know if that's a thing that actually happens, that's just in my mind so that it seems more different and like natural to me on if I'm logging it. So I'd spend about five to ten minutes per ounce now. Actually, again, we're not going to keep it as very structured after five minutes on the dot, we stop with that ounce. So if he's having two ounces, you would do five, ten minutes on that so kind of wait around could either randomize it or usually if i'm like doing something whilst feeding or watching something i would just kind of keep checking and if i stop it at some point between the five ten minute mark then it would be like okay we're done with that ounce between each ounce you burp them they tell you to do that because they inhale a lot more or they swallow a lot more air when they're bottle feeding so you need to get that up you don't want their little tummy to fill up with air because then they won't fill it entirely with their formula and then they won't be as full they, they won't be full enough they'll need feeding again sooner so after each ounce you do five ten minutes and then you burp him get out all the air and then we do another ounce and when he's done maybe give him a dummy if it's gone quite quickly you would give him a dummy so that to kind of distract him until he realizes that he's full i've heard a lot of babies who do eat faster they don't notice they can chug down like four ounces in 10 minutes and they still think they're hungry but they're only really little and they just keep cramming it in and if you keep giving it to them and they keep taking it really really quickly eventually once they finally realize they're full they're way too full and then they're overfed and then they spit it all back up again it's something that kind of goes along with feeding is with nappies so you increase by one wet nappy for each day until they're a week old. So on their first day when they're born you're expecting them to have one nappy, on the second day you're expecting them to have two wet nappies, third day it's three wet nappies etc and it goes up until they're having about six to eight wet nappies every day. With dirty nappies they have meconium for the first couple of days, that's like black tarry stuff. They would only have one for the first few days and then one or two after that. Breastfed babies go more often but our babies are formula so they would have them less frequently they still can have them more or they could have them less than that but you're looking to have around one or two a day and after the first few days it would go down to like this soft yellowy greenish poo and then I've also planned out how I'm gonna do his weight but that's once we get into the role play so yeah this is feeding I've worked on this for years, as I said, trying to come up with the best way of doing this. And for me, I think the more random it is, the more realistic it is, even if it's just for me. So thank you all for watching. Hit a like if you enjoyed this. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want more videos. Keep an eye out for news of this year's roleplay because I promise it is coming. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.